Right muckers, and in last week's video, uh, I asked you, out of all these tractors in here, which one would you want to spend a day on? And um, yeah, it's quite varied, but I think, you know, um, the main ones were the 3350, 8100, and actually the little uh, gray, oh, gray and red, Fergie. Um, now, with that in mind, Keep tuned to the end of the video because there's a special reason that I asked you that question, which one of these would you want to drive? But, talking of this little old Fergie, we said we'd done all the fuel system on it. And uh, a lot of you are asking, you know, what actually had we done and could we do a video of it? Well, luckily we had done a video of it. And, um, well, roll the titles. <laughs> Right, so what we're going to do is this leaks and has been blocked off. Now, how these Fergies work, this is the main tank, okay? But if you're working on a hill or a slope where the fuel actually comes out of, which is just there, that might, if you're running low at the end of the day, it might take the fuel away if you're on a slope. So, what they did is they had it so it was fed. So this little, uh, almost like an auxiliary tank, which is lower. See, so you always had a supply of fuel, um, but that's also where all the crud uh, ends up. So they used to rot the bottoms out of these. That's what's happened to this. They've bunged it all off and they've gone direct. So what we want to do is we want to try and put it back how it should be, so that there's an auxiliary tank that works and it goes that way and then through the filters. The lift pump, I suspect, wants rebuilding. So we've got a rebuild kit, and we'll do that, and we'll plumb it all up, basically, how it was originally, uh, when it left the factory. Right, so we've got the tank off now for top here, which is down there, and then we can get this auxiliary off, um, which obviously, as we said, the bottom is rotten out on it. Uh, can we have a look at the bottom? Yeah, so that was leaking in one of these, wasn't it? And there's a little look at that. Look, is it an actual hole? It's still a hole there. Look. Oh, for fuck's sakes! Now the last time that we had the tank off, when we swilled the tank out, we noticed there was a leak on the rocker cover. So we've got a gasket now this time. So we're not going to get this off, and then we can actually have a look in here for the first time, see what it's like. Yeah, that's all broken up. If you can look, the gasket is all... There's loads of life in that. <laughs> oh, yeah, a bit of glue in that would be lovely. Right. So the lift pump is off. Uh, well, it's off anyway. Um, so I'm going to strip us out now and use the rebuild kit and we'll rebuild it. I don't think it's doing much of a job. might have a pin prick in the uh, diaphragm or something like that because I think that's leading to some of the running issues with this tractor. Right, so all the, uh, the the screws are out of here, so now we can just separate this, hopefully. Um, let's take one at the top here, while we're at it. That's that there. Let's see what we've got in here. Oh my word. Looks like we've gone prehistoric once again, muckers. And we've got some right old dinosaur spaff and shite in there. Yeah, that would... Do you know what? I reckon that would make an engine run badly. <laughs> that could answer some of our problems. Right, so I just separated that. So there's the diaphragm. And obviously that goes like that and that's the actual sort of pump action uh, but again it, re it really isn't good 
and the stuff that's actually in here is very very it's rust basically and as we know that tank was full of rust before we cleaned it out when we first got it yeah that's how ideal that is that's that has got all the proper additives in that that's look that's at the look at the ad additives in that one yeah um and it's very coarse and i'd imagine that this diaphragm is actually split or cut somewhere because of that because it's just so coarse so all right well, we know what we're doing what are you talking about Woods? it's actually nice i know it's look it's shite to see all this old crud and crap in here but it's actually nice to see something like this because there is a reason that you know you think ah oh, right if you it's when you don't find anything at all you think well it looks fine so you think well, what else can it be but you know it could be a multitude of other things as well but this certainly doesn't look good right so then when you remove this this is what you've got in the bottom there okay so you've got the spring you've got your little plunger there so that um, cam here you can see in there I don't know if you can see in there that goes up and down so this is obviously in the inside of the engine block and you've got a cam there on this and well, as the engine's turning and that cam lobe does that and that's exactly the same as when you know you you're hand priming it but it's been done automatically or mechanically let's say off the engine and that going up and down in there pushes on here with the spring and that in turn going up and down pumps the diaphragm and you know uh, that pumps the fuel but like I say this really doesn't look great so what we'll do is we'll get the kit and we'll replace all the bits and rebuild this so I've replaced this little part here already that way the other one goes the other way which we've got there um, but you can still see in there the amount of dirt and grit still left in there so I'm gonna clean that all out okay so put the new diaphragm in so I said there's the old one and now what we're gonna do well just so you know look this is what we do here and that's you can hear that working now now before, obviously that was full of crud, as you remember, because uh, there was no galls in there, so I'd imagine over time this has been absolutely mullered, so when they've cleaned out before, they've left this out. So in order to prevent any more crap getting that far, we'll fit a new gauze, like that. Give it a little turn there just to seat it. That will locate itself. And there we go, Marcus. Um, as I said, so you got your hand prime on the side here, you know, for when you're bleeding it through, just like that. Uh, but when it's turning over and the engine's running and the cams in there, as I say, that's. That's good. Right, let's get this cleaned up, get a new gasket put on, ready to put back on the side of the engine block. Right, Mike is just going to go back a step here. Uh, you see I assembled this earlier. Uh, but something just didn't sit right. Um, literally didn't sit right. Now these pumps, they can come in different configurations for different engines, obviously. And so you can swing these about uh, where the inlets and outlets are. I had them there. Because that's where I thought they were. A lot of people might say I'm stupid. I don't know. I don't think I am. Like, I'm probably smarter than that. I mean, this thing here is smarter than me, I guess, but it has a battery. But they weren't. So we couldn't connect it up. We just offered it up. It wouldn't connect up. So it's not a problem. You just undo these, turn it, and that's it. This is a point, though, Marcus. Look, before I took it off, I took a photo, right? I took a photo of the, the pump in situ. And from that... I could determine which way it actually was. So if you're working on something a bit different to what you're working on every day, take a photo. You've got phones, take a photo. That way you can always use it as reference. Um, or if you're splitting something down, it's always good. Just take a photo reference of each stage. 
because you know you might get called away on another job or you might not be able to get parts for a few days or weeks or months sometimes and at least when you go back to it you've got a point of reference all right and that's what helped us out here it's a much brighter day today um after the rain we've just had and so what we're going to do is we've got one or two blowing on here on these manifolds haven't we the gaskets on this uh, exhaust one so we thought right if we're going to get that off we want to get everything off clean the intake inlet manifold all right clean that inside and everything because they yeah, get gummed up and then we'll also have the exhaust manifold off put the new gaskets on and then we've got some new studs if we need them because kind a couple of them shot off aren't they mm, yeah Not very good so uh yeah we do that and while we were doing this we looked at the state of you can't really see it in there uh maybe you can i don't know but this radiator really isn't very good at all so we've ordered a new rad uh in the meantime i'm going to get this one done up so we can have that as a spare because you never know what else we're going to buy um but we'll get that done but we've got a new one coming all new hoses new gaskets on here a new fuel system it's gonna be all right right so we've got exhaust manifold we've got the inlet manifold it's all cleaned up and done this little bit here um when connected to there that's actually on the vacuum system remember on the county crawler the mcfordson it's got a diaphragm so you know as the revs increase so does the vacuum it moves the dark you know so there we go we explained that before on the other video um well that's a similar system here right so both inlet and exhaust manifold are on uh, and tightened up after running it for an hour or so we'll retighten them again just let as they bed in got a new exhaust as well all the exhaust there and all the shine lovely now this is that little auxiliary tank we looked at earlier kimberly's just putting that in there there we go that's coming down that side we can get to that one there see it so it's through look at that and that one shouldn't have any holes in it right there should be something there as you know which is obviously is that rad so Kimberly's taking the rad out we've got a new one uh, but we've got fettle a couple of little bits as always uh, to make it fit properly nothing major just on the shroud and uh, then we can look at getting it back where it should be Right, so we'll have a recap of where we are because we've ordered some bits bits have arrived some bits we're still waiting on but we've put the fuel system back to how it was originally so you can see we've done some other bits here we've got gaskets on hoses clips and all that sort of good stuff new exhaust new rad hoses and then round this side so now it goes how it did originally which is from the main tank in the auxiliary tank as i said that gives you um, a bit of fuel whether you're low at the end of the day or on a slope or an angle it still allows the engine to run it goes from there to lift pump lift pump the filters out the filters all the way back down to the injection pump and there we go so it's all been redone so what we're going to do now is we're going to just try and bleed this through uh, once we've got some diesel coming out of there we'll try for a start right everything's been bled up down to there uh, so what we'll do now is go for a start and to be fair it did actually cough didn't it mm. right give it a go That may not seem like much, but we've cleaned out everything, all on the air side, all on the fuel side, and it's so much more responsive now. Because before I could do just pull it back and it would wait and it would then pick up, but now, instant. Probably good. So there we are, now, so that's the little Fergie uh, virtually done now. Just one or two little other little bits we're gonna do to it, but you know, it's, it's an ongoing process as you know, but sounds as sweet as a nut and it's just on the button again now. Well, 
on the lever. Some of you may not have uh, seen what we were doing there. Did you see that we actually started it with the gear lever? Well, that's how they were done. A um, bit of a strange thing because first thing you always try and do with the track is make sure it's in neutral. And it is in neutral, obviously, and you can only, you know, uh, select start, but it just seems a, a bit of a backward way. And obviously, moving forward, you know, people did do away from the idea and went to uh, either buttons or just on a key switch or even a lever, like on the Fordsons and that. But um, yeah, it's a bit of a strange uh, thing. And as they get a bit older and wear, you have to try and keep try to find exactly where that start position is. That's all good fun. Now, back to what I said earlier in the video. And we'd asked you, what uh, tractor would you choose to spend a day on? Um, and there's a very good reason for that. So, later on this year, as now things are starting to open up a little bit, restrictions are lifting slowly, but they are lifting, we want to give you something to look forward to. So George Saunders and I uh, are going to have a day where um, two or three of you can come and join us and um, whatever tractors you choose, we'll have uh, at a, probably down at George's, we'll bring these down or whatever. So George will have the TW there and his new, uh, his new fast track um, and whatever ones you choose. And we can just have a day, we can come and join us, go and have some breakfast first and then we'll go and play with the tractors and uh, just have a, have a day out just messing about with them and you can swap around and whatever. All right? So, going on from that, all you've got to do is, you know, keep watching uh, George's videos and my videos now because we're going to ask you questions and those questions will then give you uh, the chance to enter uh, the final, um, basically, it's not so much a competition, but you know, the final draw where we'll choose three of you, and as I say, then we'll organise a day that fits everybody. And you can come and bugger about and play with some of the tractors with us. Now, the other thing is, I've been inundated with messages from people asking when we're going to do some more um, footage of the AEC Matador number 37. Um, so I am, I'm assuming that you guys uh, want to see some uh, more content and you know find out if we're going to restore 37. Yes, please, for fuck's sake. Right, so like I said, you know, the, we were just overwhelmed really with the amount of people that sort of said, you know, you've got to restore 37. So that's what we're going to do. And what I'm going to do as well next week is go and see Matt and we're going to go through it and we'll film it. So we've got to now make a list of what we can replace, what we can restore, what we've got to have fabricated, what parts are actually good and just need, you know, blasting and priming. And we'll go right through the whole process and film it so you know what lays ahead. So muggers, it's, uh, it's that time again. And we'll catch you on the next one. So until then, do well.